Extreme Collectibles with video number two. If you haven't watched video number one, that's what I dropped yesterday. I actually just filmed it. It was PCS uh, Sub-Zero. You need to watch that first, so go ahead. I'll wait. I'm serious. If you haven't watched it, go ahead. You're not going to? Alright, let's roll it. Collectibles here with Quarter Scale Scorpion from Mortal Kombat 10. This was made by Pop Culture Shock Toys and distributed by Sideshow. They made uh, two different versions of these. One was an exclusive, which has an extra switch out, where instead of this uh, normal hand you see right here that comes on all the statues, you can actually put a sword with it. Of the exclusive versions, which is what this is, they made 275, and then the collector's edition that have just the hand, they made 350, which is kind of interesting because its counterpart, Sub-Zero, they made 275 and 400, so they actually made more of the collectors. So apparently, it was either just a guess on their part, or market research shows that Sub-Zero is a more popular character. He is for me, even though it's easy to kick ass with the Scorpion. And hang on one second. You hear all that yelling and shouting? That means the person who just went upstairs did not shut the door. Whatever. Hello? Can you shut the basement door? I'm assuming it's open, open with all the yelling. There is. Sure. Thanks. Did you hear that? That was right. Um... By the way, really cool fact, I'm getting bids on a, uh, so this is the basement, it's a very big basement, and uh, in turning the door into a bookshelf, and I don't know if I'm going to do a book, if I'm going to do a palm reader, um, or fingerprint scanner, I don't know what I'm going to do, but that's, that's my next project. I've been putting it off for a long time. But, uh, yeah, so Scor Scorpion is just not as popular a character. As I said, this is from Mortal Kombat 10, PCS. A lot of the information is on my video from yesterday, but everybody's been waiting three years for the statue, finally got it. Came in standard uh, foam shipping, uh, PCS, white gloves, they still do all that. The uh, certificate of authenticity. I'm trying to talk about different things with this review than I did the Sub-Zero review to, to an extent. Um, another, uh, yeah, went together really well. I didn't talk about the pieces in Sub-Zero, but base is one. Scorpion is another, his hand is another, and then both the front and back of his dagger are another piece, and his portrait is another piece. So really easy to put together. This one has some of the same issues in concept and design that Sub-Zero had, which is tells me they probably did come from the same factory, so we're going to talk about those. And I purchased him for a lot of the same reasons, adding to my Mortal Kombat collection, um, and they're just badass looking characters. So before we jump in here, I gotta say there's a lot of really good stuff and a lot of really bad stuff. But let's jump into the concept and design. So like most video game statues and like the Sub-Zero was, it's an action dynamic pose. And not only that, you know, so you can face them off with Sub-Zero. Here's, here's actually a picture of both of them together. So it looks pretty good. So not only that, but he's sitting on a bed of molten lava. Uh, Scorpion's kind of the opposite of Sub-Zero, so fire and lava and rocks and things like that. And just like Sub-Zero, one of his uh, knees is a little bit up, but it's a different position, which I like. They could have just copied it. Probably would have saved them a lot of money on Sculpt. There are going to be a lot of similar characteristics, but just like uh, um, Sub-Zero, he's in a fighting stance. To me, this is more of a defensive stance. 
So Mortal Kombat, when that came out, do you remember instead of, of pushing back on your control pad, you had to use a button to block? What a pain in the frickin' butt to learn. What a butt, did I say? Whatever. I'm really, really tired. Uh, yeah, a lot of stuff going on. So a uh, really cool pose. I like that, and I like that they pair so well together. And they would also pair well if you had just one. So if you don't like Scorpion or you don't like Sub-Zero, any of that stuff going on. So really cool concept. Um, design, a lot of good and bad things going on. So first of all, I want to show you arguably the coolest part of this statue. So again, here's a picture of the lava. And here is a picture of the lava lit up. So it has a light up feature. And as you can see, this is so cool, so, so cool. And here's the whole thing uh, lit up. You see a few more light up parts on the portrait. Really, really kick ass. I love the light up feature on this. I really like the light up freeze ball. So while I don't have most of my statues lit up, this one I'm actually programming into when I turn on my MAME arcade game, these two are gonna turn on. I, I, it'll take like five minutes to do it. And uh, I'm not an electrician by any means, but uh, I've, I've lit a few things on fire trying to rewire them. Not at my home, at some businesses that I own, but uh, that's how you learn. You just make sure you have a fire extinguisher. Speaking of which, I sprayed somebody with a fire extinguisher today. Uh, they didn't think I'd do it. And then I found out it's his birthday. So, <laughs> happy birthday. I bought it. Well, I made someone else buy it in lunch that I'm letting them expense. So, we had uh, Rudy's. You have Rudy's barbecue? You order it by the pound? Oh, so good. But anyway, back to the design. So, the light up feature is an awesome part of the design. Uh, Two really big design issues, three design issues on this. One, just like the Sub-Zero, the exclusive, the sword switch out magnet is loose as hell. Um, even more loose. If you touch it, it'll fall off. And I don't think this is a exclusive or fail. And I actually like it better without the sword. I like them with just their traditional weapons, so I'm not too concerned about that. But man, come on. The other one is a pain issue. Where you see his skin, he has black shit all over. If this was intentional because he's a lava base, good idea, horrible execution. I don't think it was intentional. I think it's paint spatter and it's all over. So I am going to address that with Sideshow. If they don't have any more of these, I'm not going to switch it out because I do want to keep it. But then the last one is a pretty big concern. This is his left shoulder. So... I don't know what happened here. It's not broken off, it's smooth, but he had a strap that they were gonna kind of overlay onto his skin, and there's a missing piece. So now it looks like he just has a giant mole growth. Huge miss on QC. I found that in probably three minutes. So I would hope with $500 statues that we had to wait three years for, they would spend more than three minutes of QC on each statue, but I guess not. So uh, PCS, I like your stuff, but uh, two pieces in a row with problems that I waited three years for, you're going down fast. I have one, two more things on order with you, so I'm, I'm gonna push the pause button on pre-ordering anything else until I get those in in 2029. So a few design issues, but let's talk about the paint and sculpt. I think he is better than Sub-Zero. Um, again, there's a lot of similar elements that are equal in both of them, especially when we're gonna talk about some of the straps. Uh, but I think overall he's better than Sub-Zero. So starting at the bottom, the lava, and here you see it turned off. I still think it looks really good. It doesn't look as good as it does lit up, but I think they did a nice job. I wish they could have done this kind of texture and creative coloring on the snow base. But it's it's not bad at all. There's a good flow to it. Looks like it's actually flowing. I've never seen lava in real life. So also, the rock here looks pretty good. Uh, looks a little plasticky. You can tell that it's probably hollow, but uh, I think the paint helps cover up some of those uh, uh, design or you know lack of texture. Um, has some horizontal texture but not not too much vertical texture to help it out but I, I like it and another thing as we go through them one thing I do like is I'm assuming these came from the same factory they came out at the same time they're very similar 
they could have really easily done a cookie cutter sculpt for one and and I'm sure they used part of the digital sculpt for both of them if it was digitally sculpted or even if it was uh, traditionally sculpted but it's like it, they share some elements but it's definitely a completely different sculpt so I do appreciate that they didn't cut a corner there but uh, starting at the boots very different boots in Sub-Zero uh, has some of those awesome straps I like the uh, texture on here and the folds and the coloring his feet look bigger than sub zeros but just great job on the boots great detail great depth um, and again the buckles look fantastic and then i like how his pants are kind of cut off and i assume that's because they would light on fire so his pants aren't necessarily the fact that they are shorter pants but they were cut off and it don't are torn off or however that is right at the bottom and just like Sub-Zero, instead of ropes, he has straps kind of holding back his pants, which shows how baggy they are, but it shows a lot of the depth in the folds inside of them. And it's this kind of solid black color all throughout his pants. And as you move up here, you see tons of brown leather straps all over. I don't know what's going on here, but it looks cool. Not only because the sculpt and painting on them is done well, but uh, just, it, it looks cool. It's not too much. Then his loincloth, uh, which is part of his uh, gi or uh, outfit, whatever that is. Great faded color like it was burnt. That orange has burnt marks on it. I really like that. I like kind of the stitching on the side and there's this uh, ring on the front only on one side, but on the back it's on the other. So this, this costume is definitely seen wear and tear. And then moving up that same part of his uniform on his chest here, he has some straps holding it together. He has kind of this cool uh, belt buckle that looks like an elongated C and some stitching. And then up at the top, uh, more straps right in the middle, just holding everything together. Some uh, rings holding the straps together. Some, some shoulder straps as well. He is strapped out, but it looks good. It, re it looks really good. And then on his sides here, he has kind of the same material as his pants, but a little more wrinkled, a little bit more uh, uh, tears and depth in it because there's been more battle. And then looking at the anatomy of his arm, the paint sucks, like I said. First of all, the, 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 the color is not the best. Uh, it's too light and there's no, not enough variations. There's no veination, uh, maybe a tiny bit right on the fronts, and there actually is a little bit of blue on there but I hate that spattered paint everywhere. And the muscles look really good, but they needed some texture on his skin. They needed to add a little bit of texture to make it more realistic. And he has the uh, bicep straps. And it's interesting, it's actually different on each arm, and that's obviously intentional. And then just like Sub-Zero has these cool wrist gauntlet type things uh, with some wear in the black leather with leather straps and buckles all over it obviously for defense, looks really good. And then his hands, his hands look okay. Uh, the nails look really good, some, some weird texture on it, very bony, but I like it, that's what she said. And then looking at uh, his uh, throwing spear here, if someone knows the proper name for it, I just know it's Backpack uh, X. Uh, looks good. I, I like the blood on it. The blood on this is a lot better than the blood on the sword I showed earlier. I know PCS has been known to really screw up blood, and it doesn't look great, but it looks okay. It, it, they didn't screw this up, so that's nice. There's no more blood on him, though, so that would have been nice to see blood in other places. And then moving to his portrait, first his hood. I like it a lot. Not too many folds or anything in it, but the, just this basic solid color, very scorpion-ish. And then his face, probably same sculpt as Sub-Zero, the whited out eyes. Uh, eyebrows look very similar. A very similar angry expression. Doesn't seem as angry, but almost. And some bags underneath his eyes. And then his face mask looks fantastic. I really like this. I like the, the different gold they use. So it's, it closely resembles his uh, uniform, but it's, it's different. And it's worn with all these black specks on it. And then just the sculpt of it. I'd have to look really close at the video game but I rarely play it. So there you have it. Some crazy, crazy stuff with these two statues. Um, I'm going to keep them uh, unless I, well, I'm, uh, other than the broken issues or the paint speckled issues, and I'll figure that out, but I want to keep them. So uh, one last fun, kind of funny story, the Mortal Kombat theme uh, song, which 
this is, let's play it right now, such an awesome uh, workout song. Uh, and what's funny is I started this tradition when my kids were really little, like I think when the youngest kid even walk. And uh, let's cut it so I don't get any copyright issues. But uh, right when the music is really pumping up before it's fight and all the fantastic, you know, upbeat music, me and my three children, I would play that on loudspeakers through the house and they'd all come running to a room and find me and we would face each other like this. And uh, it was so cute, they still do it. So, I mean, see a two-year-old, a four-year-old, and a six-year-old, and now a, they're seven, nine, and 11. Uh, they're all January birthdays. We have fun Cinco de Mayo. I think I shared that once. But, uh, uh, and then the second, it's fight. We all, it, it's them three against me. So I pick them up and I throw them and, I, you know, we broke a few bones, but that, that's part of growing up. Um, yeah, explain that one to a doctor. Daddy threw me across the room. But uh, I'm kidding. We've never, they've never broken bones. Lucky bastards. I broke like 20 growing up. Not from senior Mr. X, just in general. Uh, because we didn't stay inside and play video games. I guess we did play some video games. I'm just ranting now. Let's just close it up. Uh, please let me know your thoughts on this guy. Uh, if you have any Mortal Kombat pieces, what video game pieces do you have? That would be cool. Um, and let me know what you think of PCS. Uh, you know, the pop culture shock. Uh, I don't know where they're going. Uh, it's been worrisome for a long time. When they gave up distributing, we all had a little bit of hope. So, uh, yeah. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Take care.